gentlemen, welcome to comedy from home sweet home. How are we doing? What's up? We got some great comics for you tonight. They're going to try to make you laugh. We got a good list ahead of you, a lot of funny people. I'm your guest host, Tyler Bauer, filling in for Jacob McFadden while he has a baby. Give it up for that. Hell yes. I'm going to start you off a little off the top here, trim you up a little off the top here. Let's get down to brass tacks. All right, all right. Oops, all berries, home sweet home. Oops, all berries. Oops, all berries, home sweet home. Fuck oops, all berries. I'm sick of oops, all berries. It's bullshit. You should be fired for a mistake like that. You shouldn't be celebrated. That's an OSHA violation right there, doing oops all berries. That's fucked up. You should be fired for a mistake like that. Put out on the streets. Doing street drugs. Hell yeah. You're out there doing street drugs on the street because you made a mistake at the factory. And then one day it's oops all fentanyl. Hell yeah. <laughs> Love drugs. Na, 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 na. Slang's funny, guys. Slang is hilarious. I like slang. I like using slang. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> up and down, up and down. Side to side. <laughs> I think it's funny using slang from a culture you're not from. Like, if you're not Jewish, you can say uh, schmutz or bubala or death to Palestine. <laughs> it's not the only uh, Jewish thing you can do when you're not Jewish. For example, I'm circumcised. Not Jewish. <laughs> not even Ashkenazi. It's bullshit. What happened to my nerve endings? Where are my nerve endings, home sweet home? I need those nerve endings. I'm not having real sex. I'm having the essence of sex. It's LaCroix sex. <laughs> LaCroix, whatever. <laughs> Love is Blind is a TV show. Have you seen that TV show, Love is Blind? I think, uh, you know, eventually with all the reality shows, they do spinoffs and shit. I can't wait for Love is Blind Helen Keller edition. <laughs> They're all deaf, dumb, and blind. <laughs> They have to feel each other, guys, and at some point, at some point for a challenge, they gotta fly a plane. Is that something the real Helen Keller did, allegedly? I don't fucking believe that Helen Keller flew a plane. I don't even believe that Helen Keller is real. Helen Keller is a fucking made-up tale. If you believe in Helen Keller, grow up. Side note, uh, <laughs> hand jobs, hand jobs are great, but hand jobs are never sweeter than at a La Quinta Inn. <laughs> just a statement, just a statement, guys. We all know that uh, old school game telephone, you know that game telephone, you sit in the line with your friends, it starts with a message at one end, you whisper it in the next person's ear, it goes down the line, the message usually gets jumbled up. Did you know that game was originally called Chinese Whispers? It's a real Googleable fact, you can look it up. What the fuck? <laughs> Crazy. It was originally called Korean Telephone, but it got jumbled up down the line. The French call it Arabic Telephone, Crazy. We know where they stand on the Israel-Palestine situation. Sorry, there's no punchline. Me so sorry. Chinese guy told me to say that, but it was filtered through like 20 people. And we got a lot of great comics to filter through tonight. Are you ready for your first comic of the night? Your first comic of the night is bald. He's strong and bald. He's bald and strong. He'll fuck you up. 
<laughs> Name some famous bald people. Shout them out. Mr. Clean. Your first comic is better than all those people you just named. Put your hands together for Jack Parker. Yeah, take it back. All those famous people you named, they're way cooler than Jack Parker. <laughs> I jumped the gun. My bad, guys. Anyway, your next comic never jumps the gun. He always shoots straight. He was in Desert Storm. He killed a lot of whoever we were fighting in that war. <laughs> and he did it because it was his job. And tonight he's here to also do his job. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Larry Falls! I like his story. It's a lot better than the truth. <laughs> Let's see. I practice this pre-show. Hang on. There we go. Oh, good. On. Oh, yeah. Bear with me. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, how's that? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> I, eight months ago, I had an amazing stroke of luck. Well, that's half true. <laughs> and that's the extent I'm going to uh, talk about my stroke. I acknowledge it. I'm done. Because most of you guys are the Richmond comedy community and esteemed guests, right? So let me try something different. I'm going to talk about something that uh, I'm very grateful for. You've, you, You've heard me say before, you know, I'm glad that although this this uh, right side, I was paralyzed, but I'm left-handed now, and <laughs> but uh, the other thing I'm really, really thankful for, the blessed, wonderful, natural, homegrown cannabis. <laughs> you know, I, with with a stroke, it, you have so many different feelings. Depression can take over, anxiety, and it really is a godsend. Legalized cannabis. You know, uh, I've even found out I make a damn good cannabis cookie. I, I, I like a pastry that bakes it back. In my head, that was hysterical. <laughs> well, I have one important question, right? Why is it we, we've got cannabis cookies and brownies, but doctors never do that? You know, you think about it, you could put any drug into a pastry, you know, right? I mean, the doctors are stuck having to tell people, I'm sorry, you've got cancer, you're going to have to have chemo, you're going to get really sick and probably die anyway. Here's a nice hot brownie. All right. Uh, before I leave on that topic, I thought I might tell you something. When I was younger, right, uh, you know, the laws regarding cannabis were a lot tougher, and so we had to hide the cannabis. We, when we were smoking, we'd have to hide and joint it if anybody was coming, and I sometimes would use sleight of hand in order to do that. What would, would you like to see? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Both of you. Okay. So I think now, nowadays it's slight of one hand. It's the gold stuff. So we're hanging out. We're enjoying the uh, talk, and then here comes Miss Judge Judy. You gotta get rid of it. So you just uh, put it up on the visible shelf there until she's gone. And this right back. 
Oh, thank you, thank you. I said, so, well, okay, well, it's uh, almost embarrassing. And if a cop came in, yeah, take more shares. That's me, see you guys later. Keep it over there. most of our futures if we don't chill the fuck out. <laughs> Thank you, Larry, for doing that service. It's like when high school prom happens and they put like a wrecked car in the parking lot to be like, this could happen to you. <laughs> Your next comic would never drive drunk because he doesn't own a car. Not because he drove drunk. Which I don't know which one's sadder, but he's happy and here tonight, ready to make y'all laugh. Please put your hands together for the great and powerful Will Miner! Keep it going for Larry, everybody. A stroke of genius, my gosh. He's all right. I mean, all left. Oh, boy. I don't know. I know. I'm the worst. You are, are you a wizard? That was incredible. That was the greatest thing I've ever seen. The, like, the sleight of hand. That was fucking awesome, dude. Yes, I'm a wizard. I can whiz for you, if you like. I've, I've seen the whiz. Also, don't pee your pants, Larry. I feel very bad. There's a bathroom, like, right there. I'd be like, oh, Larry, not for me. I do not deserve that pee in your pants. I'd, st I'd start peeing in my pants. Larry, no, let me. Come on. I know, that's ableist. He can pee in his own pants, okay? He doesn't need, Larry doesn't need me or any of you to piss his pants, all right? Larry, let me take this, all right? Stop. I'm, just, I'm the fucking worst. I'm sorry. I'm the worst. You're amazing, though, because I didn't know you were a magician. You certainly made my misery disappear. Oh. You were very delightful. Right. All right, I guess I'll tell my jokes. I'll do my jokes now. Uh, I'll start with stuff that's uh, been doing a duel and then try new things. Uh, I recently got shot. I got shot. Oh boy, I got shot. Thank you. It was King. You just like right in the heart. It was a great shot. Like fucking ah, Jesus. It was like ah, it can't be bad. I'm so proud of you, sport. <laughs> No, it's not as dramatic as you think. I was walking home from work, and as I was walking home, like a car pulled up next to me, and they lowered their windows, and a guy stuck an airsoft gun out, and he just lit me the fuck up. This guy just shot me up and down. To... And I don't know what made me more upset. The fact that that guy just rolled up on me and just shot me like a jackass, or the fact that I found out that if I ever do get shot, it turns out my last words are just going to be, Ah, fuck my ass! <laughs> also, you want to know the worst part about that whole experience, getting shot like that? They got me twice! They came back! It's an ass so nice they shot it twice. I don't know, it was terrible. It was weird. Like, I don't know, my friends were all like, Will, you should call the cops. Will, you gotta call the cops and tell them what happened. I know. And despite the fact that I look like a cop that hasn't worked in a long time, like, I am not really into the police. I'm not down with them. I'm not, like, I don't know. Like, every time, I don't know. Based on my experience, every time, I don't know if this has ever happened to you all, if you, every time I've called the cops, they've always harped on me for something that I've done. Or like, you know what I mean? They just get me in trouble because I called them for help. I can only imagine, like, if I called the police and explained, Oh my gosh, these guys rolled up on me and they shot me. And the police just being like, Well, Will, you did chase after him. And technically that's jaywalking, so... <laughs> that's going to be $300. That'll be a $300 fine. Guys, I got shot! Ah, okay, sorry. I'll work on a funnier punchline than that. Uh, I like Pokemon. Does anybody else like Pokemon? I'm doing a Pokemon joke. Hell yeah, I knew I'd get it. I knew I'd get this guy, Pokemon. I looked at that face and I was like, Pikachu. That guy knows it. Are you familiar with Pokemon, sir? Do you know the kind of the, the thing? Like, no, righteous. <laughs> you are my target demo. It's a tough demo. Ooh. <laughs> No, if you don't know, they're like little weird, like, Japanese monsters. People catch them and throw them. It's a really fun game. It's like a video game and a bunch of other shit. I don't know if you know this about Pokemon. They say their names. I actually really... I wish more people were like Pokemon. Because uh, I'm terrible with names. Like, what's your name, sir, if I may? Brian. Brian. Like, if you were a Pokemon, it'd be so easy. You'd just like, Brian. Brian, Brian, Brian. Brian, Brian, Brian. Brian, 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 Brian. If I threw you into battle, you'd be like, Brian, 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 and Brian. 
Oh my gosh, I was there the whole time. Watching from afar. You thought you were alone at your father's funeral. You weren't. I was there on the grove. Watching from beneath the tree. I was there. I put a coat around your shoulders. So you don't remember me. Are you Batman, Brian? You might be my Batman, because you certainly saved me from that terrible fucking Pokemon joke. Oh, Pokemon joke did not go where I wanted to. Oh boy. Oh man, it's about to be. Okay, I'll get out of here on a stupid one. Oh man, Tyler brought it up. I did it, so don't be bad. Uh, oh boy, Gaza. Wow, oh boy. <laughs> I know, the Jews are in a lot of hot water. I personally like the Jews. I don't know. I actually really like Jewish people, you know? I know, tilt the camera down. <laughs> Jeez, I know, it's getting hot. I know. I do really, I actually do really like Jewish people. I think they're really cool. You know, they just looked at uh, Gaza and Palestine and they were like, ooh, buy one, get one free. Yes, I will. Okay. All right. Goodbye. I'm going to leave now. Thank you. <laughs> Keep it going for Will Miner. He loves the Jews. All right. Let's keep this show moving right along. This train moving right along. Chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it. Choo choo. Speaking of which, your next comic looks like he could have been a train conductor in an old black and white cartoon, I think. I don't know. <laughs> he looks silly, but he's a great guy. Love him to death. Please put your hands together for Ben Pierce. <laughs> Keep it going for Ben Pierce, everybody. Yeah. If he was the villain in Taken, Liam Neeson would have gotten his daughter back really quick. <laughs> Wouldn't have even been a problem. <laughs> Your next comic is actually Ben Pierce's daughter. <laughs> Here to speak her truth, put your hands together for Grace Moyer! It's true. Uh, ben Pierce did alienate me. It was when he did like three minutes of jokes about gorillas or kids following in gorilla enclosures. <laughs> I'm doing great so far. Uh, and he never mentioned Harambe. R.I.P. Harambe. R.I.P. Harambe. I would say dicks out for Harambe, but you know, gotta be careful, Mr. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, you guys watching Love is Blind? Nobody? Cool. Do, do you know the concept of it? They don't see what they look like, they fall in love, they get engaged, then they find out what they look like, and they decide if they want to get married. Um, and this season is set in my hometown, so I thought about applying, but I knew that they would make me a villain because I just want to be on TV, which, according to them, is the wrong reason. But I refuse to believe that doing it to get married is somehow more reasonable than that. Cool. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think it's a great show. I just think the problem is they keep saying that they're trying to prove if love is really blind. Uh, but it's not. You know, we're six seasons in. We know that they only get married if they're both hot. <laughs> so really, it's just an experiment to prove whether you should be blaming your looks or your personality. It, nobody agrees? Cool. <laughs> I'm having fun. Um, and so that's the real reason I didn't apply, is I already know it's my personality's fault. Um, uh, I've also been watching The Millionaire Matchmaker lately. Anybody yeah, watch that one? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, and I've recently made a couple matches, so I've been thinking that I deserve my own spinoff show. You know, something like uh, The $20 Matchmaker. And uh, instead of her rules, which are a uh, two drink maximum and no sex until monogamy. My rules would be a two drink minimum and no monogamy until anal. <laughs> that was uh, going to lead into a joke about the TV show The L Word. <laughs> but uh, there's too many men in here, so you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I would be mad if you guys had watched The L Word. 
<laughs> That's not for you. Um, these jokes are just for Cade. <laughs> listen, Cade, listen! It's all for you! Um, uh, I started a new job today. Yeah. Working at a nail salon. Uh, they don't know that I do stand up, so that's a fun little secret identity, I feel. Um, yeah, that, what did you say? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, that's my excuse for the way that this is going tonight. Um, for me, having sex with women is like playing pool. You know, I know how to do it. I might not have a much game, but I learned in college when I was drunk. <laughs> I know I look hot doing it, and I have landed the eight ball before. But like, I definitely need a partner, thank God, who is so much better at it than I am. You know, like a while ago, I was kind of dating this girl who had never played pool before. And I was like, I definitely shouldn't be teaching someone else. You know, I'm not even sure I remember the right finger positions. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> one last one before I go, I guess. Uh, I think virtual appointments have gone too far. They're great for some stuff. I love going to therapy in bed, but I gotta draw the line at virtual gynecologists. Cause like, what does that even mean? You know, how does that work? Am I just supposed to describe it to them? And they have to take my word for it? Or am I expected to show whole on camera? But. I'm paying them. <laughs> Something smelling a little fishy. That's my time. Thanks, guys. Keep it going for Grace Moore, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Guys, it might just be us comics, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter, we're still gonna have a great time telling each other the same jokes we've all heard. And you better laugh hard for the recording. Your next comic is a man of the people. He also fought in Desert Storm against Larry. I think, I don't know. I've only ever seen Black Hawk Down, kind of, when it was on TV sometimes. <laughs> Your next comic is large and in charge. Not physically, but mentally. He used to be big, apparently. I never knew him when he was big, but I've always known him as your next comic. Put your hands together for Big Scotty! Keep it going for Big Scotty, everybody. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. Round of applause. Who wants to see Big Scotty naked? Sorry, that was Big Scotty's dick. My bad. Anyway. Your next comic came all the way from New Jersey. A lot of people talk shit about New Jersey, and I think that's hack. But I will say, I have been to New Jersey. And it does piss me off that I can't pump my own fucking gas there. I'm an adult, not a fucking child. I'm not gonna fucking tip the gas station attendant. Suck my dick. Anyway, your next comic is a gas station attendant from New Jersey. Put your hands together for Kevin Carrier! Give it up for Tyler, everybody. Give it up for
for all the other comics here, right? You guys are great. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I am from New Jersey, you know. Don't far. believe, yeah, it's just far, right? Uh, don't believe what you saw in Jersey Shore, okay? We don't all gym tan laundry, clearly, okay? <laughs> That's like a 2010 joke, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, for me, it's like, I, I like Virginia. You guys have, like, a lot of mountains, too. In New Jersey, we have a lot of mountains of cocaine, so... Yeah, if you saw Scarface or Godfather, you get that joke, so it's cool. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm half Puerto Rican. Okay, okay. And I'm half white. Yeah! Okay, yeah, yeah, white people, yeah. I like that. Sweet boy! Yeah. Uh, which makes my blood type coquito, so yeah. <laughs> it's a white Puerto Rican drink, guys, so. <laughs> um, but, like, I feel like growing up, uh, my, my Puerto Rican mom, uh, she didn't teach me Spanish. I think because she wanted to talk smack about me behind my back. Uh, she don't know I know about Google Translate, though, so. Yeah, mom, I know what puta means, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny because, like, you know, every time I hear the song Despacito, I'm reminded of the fact that Justin Bieber knows more Spanish than me. It's really embarrassing. Uh, and the thing is, like, for me, more like, I don't even look or act Puerto Rican, right? You know, I don't, I don't speak Spanish fluently. I don't, I don't salsa dance. Uh, I'm not in a gang, so, you know. Yeah, a lot of, I, I don't think you could be Puerto Rican if you're not in a gang, you know, so. Um, but the thing for me is more like, I'm as Puerto Rican as Elizabeth Warren is Native American. You guys remember that? Like, that was like 2021 or whatever. She said she was like 1% Native American. Yeah, yeah you, you remember. You remember. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so, uh, are, there, are there any like Gen Z in the crowd? Any Gen Z? No? Gen Z? Okay, woo! Yeah. So, uh. Y'all are probably Gen Z. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a millennial, uh, although a comedian told me I look Gen Z, uh, I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. Like, do I, do I look young or do I look entitled? I don't know, okay? Probably both, probably both. So. It was funnier when he said it, okay guys? So, yeah. Um, so, uh, I, uh, I'm also a, uh, I'm a software engineer, so IT guy. Yep, I see you, I see you, bro. Uh, which obviously means I'm very, very single. So, yeah, yeah, ladies. Uh, some of y'all are in the dating apps, right? Not only am I on the apps, I also write the apps, so. Yeah, what's up, what's up, you know? Uh, and the thing is, like, I want to program Tinder, so whenever a girl left swipes on me, I was like, hey, are you sure? <laughs> are you really sure? Congrats, you master Kevin, woo! Yeah, that's what you wanted, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm working on it, so, um, cause like dating is hard, like it's not as easy what it was, like, like my parents, my dad took my mom horseback riding for their first date, right? So like back in the 80s, like that's super romantic, uh, in 2024, that's like a true crime story, right? Uh, cause you can't like take someone out into the middle of the woods just by yourself, though, and it's gonna be like a, a fun date, right? You know, unless that horse has been like a war horse and it's like seen some shit, though it's not gonna protect you, you know? Cool, new joke, guys. So, also, uh, like speaking of like the whole technology thing, I recently read that there's a woman who is like uh, known as a human cyborg. She has like 50 like uh, technological like implants in her body, though. It's true, right? Like her boobs have Bluetooth, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, it's called boob tooth. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny in my head, so. Cool, cool, cool. You don't, you don't like that, Joseph and Paul. I, I see you. Okay, okay, I see you. That's fine. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. All right, uh, so I'll end with this uh, last joke. So, uh, recently I was thinking uh, if, uh, if Stevie Wonder wasn't blind, he'd be Stevie Familiar. Okay, you got it, you got it, you got it. Because, <laughs> uh, like, if you, you know. See, you got it, it was like a late reaction. You got it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it. Um, <laughs> because, like, you know, 
if he wasn't blind, like he could stop asking everybody, like, isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? He could stop asking everybody, you know? Because she's not lovely. She's a bitch, man. How can you not see it? He's a bit he's blind, guys. He's blind. So. Love is blind. What we're talking about love is blind before, right? We can't talk about okay, never mind. All right, All right guys, I'm Kevin Care, everybody. Hell yeah! Why the fuck is it that when I guest host this show, no one's in this bar? Guys, can we please take a few seconds to do a ritual to materialize people in this bar or something? Alright, three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Alright, please. Give these people somebody to fucking talk to beside Kevin Carrier's friend who's leaving now. <laughs> Fair, hey. Five dollars for a PBR in a show. I, no, I, I, are you from New Jersey too? I am not. Oh, where are you from? Dallas. Dallas? Hey, that's the Dallas oh, way, Dallas. dude. That's the Dallas flip off, dude. And I don't know shit about football, but fuck the Cowboys! <laughs> Your next comic hates the fucking Cowboys! <laughs> And he recently publicly stated that he's a recovering alcoholic who will no longer drink. So you, if you see him with a beer in his hand, swat it out of his hands and say, Shame! 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 And please put your hands together for my best friend, also the co-host of Basic City Open Mic Comedy that I host with him every Wednesday, tomorrow night at 8. Just saying. Guys, put your hands together and uh, love him and grace him with your presence. Monty Giles! Hey, hey, that boy's good. Ah, shit. Hey, yo, Tyler, this is so sweaty. What the fuck? That was gross. Uh, yeah, I did quit drinking. Cool. That's why no one showed up, Tyler, because I'm not fun anymore. <laughs> I swear to God, Tyler, Tyler when I, the first time I ever quit drinking, Tyler told me I wasn't as funny sober. That's and that's true. when I relapsed. I swear, it's on camera, yes it is. On camera, where? Right here. Right now? I didn't say that back then. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I didn't quit drinking. I honestly, I posted it on my story, and, because I was like, I need everyone to know so everyone knows that I'm not drinking. And then five seconds later, I was like, I look like such a douchebag, dude. Yeah. It's like, my, name, my Instagram name is Monty Giles Comedy, and my only thing I've posted in the last year is I'm quitting drinking. <laughs> I'm totally gonna turn into the I'm better than you sober comic. There's gonna be pictures of me holding water, just be like, mmm. Nah, it's cool. The best thing about getting sober is I get to ask everyone for favors and threat that I'll relapse. <laughs> I'm like, dude, let me hit your joint. Otherwise, there's a bar inside. Give me a ride. Otherwise, I'm going to walk to a bar. Send me a nude. Otherwise, I'll feel lonely and drink again. All right, that was a work in progress. It got so quiet. Okay, we'll do this. Uh, anyone not like thought police? Anyone against the thought police? Yeah. Why? Sounds bad. It's not. No, the thought police are needed because pedophiles can lucid dream. Yo, yo. I like that one. Uh, I teach kids. I'm actually leaving them the end of this week, and I can't wait to talk so much shit on them. But my kids are dumb as shit. But they do say fun things, like this lesbian uh, middle schooler I teach. She was. Why is that funny? That's liberal propaganda. But no, I teach her, and she got in an argument with this dude in the hallway, and she was like, yo, keep talking shit, and I'll scissor your bitch. <laughs> she can't even spell scissor. <laughs> Funniest shit I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> Sir, how do you feel about pedophiles lucid dreaming? <laughs> a master of your craft, you might say? Uh, I had a nightmare. I was cursed to have a half a cup of gravy stuck in my mouth at all times. <laughs> It was the worst thing ever. 
<laughs> Imagine trying to talk and there's just a half a cup of gravy constantly filling up in your mouth. Do you think that's code? No, it's called a nightmare. I woke up in a cold sweat. No, we should call people gravy mouths, honestly. For some, that, sounds, that sounds weird. Like, ma'am, ma'am, walking down the steps. <laughs> nah, she's a gravy mouth, it's fine. I call them like I see them. Every 10 minutes, I'll be about I just gotta get them. I love that shit so Imagine in a job interview and they're like, all right, what are your qualifications? It's like, well, what's up? I just gotta talk about it. You're trying to hit on a chick in a bar and you're like, hey, baby, sorry, I got a little bit of gravy in my mouth. <laughs> oh, sorry, I might get a little gravy on you. <laughs> Generational curse, Madame Zamondi type shit. <laughs> and then you have to worry about if your kids are also gonna be gravy mouths. <laughs> like holding your son in your arms. That's what Jack's gonna happen to Jacob this Friday. He's gonna be holding his kid in his arms, and the kid's gonna look at him and open his eyes and see his father for the first time, and try to speak or cry, and just gravy, just a half a cup, just falls right out. He'd be like, no! It's called a failed birth control marriage. You get a gravy mouth. How many people do you think have dropped out of activism because they tried to stay in a, start a chant at a march and it didn't catch on? You know, because chants are the funnest part about protesting and shit, but someone's like, the right can't wipe! The right can't... Got oh, what the fuck? And just join the other side. Um, and now I can just blame, like, these are jokes I wrote when I was shit-faced, so you can't be mad at me. I did the pedophile thing. All right, what's sadder than suicide? What? Pet suicide. <laughs> Thank God we don't have pet suicide. There would be a direct correlation between pet suicides and human suicide. Imagine just having a hamster and you think it loves you. And then you just come in one day and it just has floss wrapped around its neck, hanging from the top of its enclosure. With a note that's just a paw print, because they can't write. Duh. <laughs> you thought that, that's why it killed itself. It was tired of being around an idiot. Okay, Tyler, is that it? Cool. That's been my time. My name is Monty Giles. Give it up for my best friend, Tyler Bauer! Oh. I fucking love that guy, but give it up for Monty Giles, everybody! Hey. Damn, dude. My hamster fucking killed itself, I killed myself. Guys, give it up for Monty Giles! Woo. Can't untighten the. What the fuck is going on? The mic stand's broken, guys, so if you're short, you're good. If you're tall, you're fucked. Guys, your next comic is probably somewhere between short and tall, I think. He's your average guy, NPC. He's an NPC in the video game Elder Scrolls Oblivion. He looks like it. <laughs> He's fucked up, this guy. <laughs> And he'll never tell you otherwise. He'll always say, I'm fucked up! Kill me! <laughs> Put your mitts together for your next comic, the very red-nosed Charlie travels across the ground. <laughs> it looks like a mouse. Uh, I don't know. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, anyone here like a, a coward? Yep. No? Just you. No one, just me? Yeah, I am a coward. I'm like, I'm, a, I'm one of these, uh, you know, these pussy ass cowards you hear about. I'm a total coward. I need, a, I, I need something for self-defense because I'm like a huge pussy. I don't know how to fight, so I feel like I need a weapon to defend myself. But like, uh, I can't have a gun, right? I can't have a gun, because I do not trust myself with a gun, okay? 
Because if I had a gun, I would constantly be pulling it out to pretend to commit suicide as a gag. <laughs> like, I would constantly just, you know, be at a party and someone's telling me about their boring data entry job. <laughs> I have concealed carry. I'm just like, oh my god! <laughs> and then I'd be like, I won't do it this time, but you become more interesting. Uh, <laughs> That's the lesson you should learn. But at one point, I would just accidentally pull the trigger. as a, Like, I'm in McDonald's in line, and I'm just like, I turn to someone else, like, this is taking forever, but it's a real gun. And my, my finger would slip, so I don't trust myself, so I can't have a gun, I can't have a gun. But I need, I need a means to defend myself, because I am a huge pussy that doesn't know how to fight. But I think I found a good weapon for myself. I think what I'm gonna start doing for self-defense is I'm gonna fill one of my pockets with sand, so that way, like, if someone comes up to me, they try to rob me, they hold me with a gun or a knife, they're like, give me your wallet. I'll be like, okay. Okay, sir, I'm, I'm going for my wallet. Stand! <laughs> Throw it in their eyes. And I would shout the attack like I was in an anime. Blinding sand! <laughs> then I just run away. They're like, oh my god. If somehow that doesn't work, they chase me. I reach into my other pocket. It's full of marbles. Take this! Uh, I think it would work. All right. Uh, I wrote this literally earlier, because everyone's talking about Love is Blind. That's come up several times. Oh, why don't they make Love is Deaf, right? <laughs> why don't they make Love is Deaf, right? You meet the person, you see what they look like, but you can't hear them, you got earmuffs, you write each other notes. Then you take off the earmuffs. You find you find someone you think you're in love. You agree to marry them. You take them off. Everyone sounds like Fran Drescher. <laughs> no, I love you. That's sounded more like Marge. I don't know. They all sound like Marge. <laughs> oh, let me. You are handsome. Let me see your cock. I don't know. That would be grating. <laughs> It'd be grating to fuck someone with a voice like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, love is deaf. Uh, I don't know. Um, also, that that show sucks because Love is Blind, but they, they're all hot. They're all hot. They need at least one like gigantic fat person in the group, right? Why isn't there one 900-pound person there, right? They're all handsome. You need some... 900 pound people, some burn victims, like, come on, we... Let's make it more interesting. They're just like, I don't know what they look like. It's always just a handsomer man or a beautiful woman. Like, I don't know. <sighs> it's all right. This is my first time, so... Um, thanks, guys. Uh... The men on that show what, Grace? I can hear you. There's five of us. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I think they're handsome. They're handsome to straight men. <laughs> they're like Ryan Reynolds. Uh, straight guys love him. No woman or gay man likes him. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess I got a dog. Let's see. And it's not you? It's not me? Yeah, no, I'm a bit of a dog too. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, my attitude is dog-like. Put me in a damn kennel, come on. You better lock me up in the pound. That's my new kind of stand-up persona, the junkyard dog. Come into my junkyard, I'll bite your nuts. Uh, I'm a dog who bites nuts. All right, I don't know. I, I don't have time to tell the other joke, so I'm just gonna end it there. Let's give it up for Tyler Bauer. He's such a beautiful guy, and but also he looks funny too. I don't. I can't get into it, but he's funny looking. Fuck him. I love him. <laughs> Keep it going for Charlie Waring, everybody. <laughs> that boy Pitbull, Mr. Worldwide. That guy. Does anyone want to help me try to untighten this mic stand thing? Can anybody, anybody want to hold, uh, tighten it while I hold it? 
Hell yeah, silver! Hey! There we go! Oh my god, stop Palestine genocide, everybody! Your next comic will not just leave them alone. And why does he do that? I don't know. He's not even Jewish, but he still is against the Palestinian people. <laughs> but he does a sick kickflip. And I kind of agree with him after he does it. Your next comic is a situation, guys. Lovely dude, lovely guy. Put your hands together for Steve Jones. Keep it going for Tyler, everybody. Come on now, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, wow, great. Not gonna lie, before I came here, I was doing my favorite fucking thing. I was at home, I was looking at my phone, that's it. Anybody else love looking at their fucking phone? I love looking at my phone, it's so much fucking fun. Every morning I wake up, I look at my beautiful girlfriend, I'm like, nice. Then I look over at my nightstand and I see that motherfucker looking at me, I'm like, yes! This is about to be so sick. I pick up my phone, I start looking at it, I'm like, oh my god, Russia you invaded Ukraine again, that's crazy, holy fuck. Eggs are bad for you again, I didn't know that. Oh my god, my mom has texted me. My dad started drinking again. Oh my god, he's in the hospital because he had a kombucha and didn't know it had .06% alcohol in it. He drank all the cooking wine at home and then drove to the liquor store and put himself in a ravine. Give it up for my dad, everybody. He's in a ravine right now. I do love looking at my phone, though. That's, that's fucking true. My phone knows me really, really well. My phone will like give me uh, app suggestions depending on what time of day it is. So every single morning it's like, good morning Steve. Here's Instagram, Reddit, and Pornhub. It's time to jack off. Oh, I didn't even think I wanted to jack off, but my phone knows me literally better than I know myself, so it must be time to jack off. You know, Pornhub's there if I want to jack off to like something professionally shot. Reddit's there if I want to jack off to something with that, like, that DIY flavor. And then Instagram there is, of course, so I can jack off to people that I know. I'm, I'm just kidding, guys. It's a joke. Instagram is there so I can jack off to my own comedy reels. I do love how much my, my phone knows me because it gives me like targeted ads. Targeted ads can be kind of scary. You know, you're talking about something and you get an ad for it the very next day. I was doing like dry January. And of course, I was talking about it all the time. And I thought this was a hot take by my algorithm, but it gave me ads for Kratom. If you guys don't know what Kratom is, it's like the CBD of heroin. And I want to be real with you, if you do Kratom regularly, I'm not going to fucking hang out with you. That is weird. It's not a good substitute for booze either. Just do heroin like a regular person, you fucking coward. Um, I guess we'll take a turn here because the phone material is going really well. Uh, you guys will love this. I still kiss my dad on the lips. I still kiss my dad on the lips. It makes, it makes some people uncomfortable. That's understandable. What makes me uncomfortable is that while I'm comfortable kissing my dad on the lips, I am not comfortable kissing my mom on the lips. Why the fuck is that? You know, it's not like I love my dad more than my mom. Which means there's probably like another ulterior like reason that I'm like fucking terrified to find out. What I'm saying, guys, is I could be secretly gay for my dad and that scares me. <laughs> These are really tying up over this dad kissing thing. You don't, you're not gay for your dad? <laughs> if you're not gay for your dad, then... It's probably... He was probably gay for you and that's bad. Um, it's not like a lips parted kiss, guys. Chill out. It's just like it's a little peck. It shows respect. Then I goose them really good on the way in. I say thanks for the kiss, Daddy. Alright, alright, okay. Alright. Sorry, Dad. 
He's in a ravine, it doesn't matter. Um, I saw this lady uh, when I was in traffic the other day. Yeah, like a light turned red, her hazard lights came on, and she got out of the car and immediately started filling her gas can, her gas tank with a gas can she pulled out of her trunk. That's insane to me because that means she ran out of gas in the middle of the city and had like a full gas can in her trunk for that reason. Like, you know where's a better place to keep all that? It's inside your fucking gas can. It is like an impressive level of self-awareness though. You know, that'd be like if I, like, I know I have a problem when I, like, drinking and driving. So that'd be like if I called a ride before I went out and had a couple of beers to prepare by going to buy myself cocaine so I can sober up for the drive home. And then fucking kill myself afterwards. Thank you, everybody. That's been my time. It's been lovely. <laughs> Keep it going for Steve Jones, everybody! Yeah! Woo! Keep it up for that guy. What is on your sweatshirt, Steve? Paris Hilton's mugshots. Hey, give it up for Paris Hilton, everybody! Why do people think she was hot? I don't get it! She was a stick, guys. Your next comic will fuck you up in multiple ways. It mentally, mentally will fuck you up. Get ready to get mind freaked! Mind freaked! <laughs> By your next comic, put your hands together for Cade Wonders! Let's go, let's go, let's go. How we doing? Yeah. How we doing, Long Face Charlie Day? It's you. Yeah, you're like Charlie with a longer face and less hair. Somehow. You'll dig it? Charlie's awesome, man. Okay, New Jersey, come on. Uh, which is Bill, Pete, Bruce? What's your name? LT. No, I know you, the guy behind you. What's your name? Brian. Brian! Do you work at CarMax or did you get that shirt at Goodwill? You, okay, cool, cool, cool. Either way, you're very passionate about disrupting the used car market, am I right? Oh, shit. Let's fucking go. Do you, uh, do you work on the floor or do you do the beep beeps? Neither. What do you do? You don't do anything. So you bought that shirt at Goodwill. Oh, he's in management. Fuck this guy! Good, this is a great start, I love this. Uh, anyway, which, sorry, I forgot your name already, sir. I'm so, I'm never gonna get a job at CarMax now, guys. Fuck. Uh, all right, we learned something about him, I'll say something about me. Uh, I'm an only child. You guys might be like, oh my God, Kate, I didn't expect that. You're so well adjusted. But I am. And as an only, any other only children here? People saying siblings, oh fuck you. That's fine. I, I had to do a lot of things to entertain myself, so I went on the internet as soon as I could. In about 2006, it was when it got really hot, y'all. I went on anime forums. Anyone? Yeah, Jesus Christ. And I posed as a 17-year-old boy named Kyle. Hey, which is fucked up, because it means that if I had transitioned in middle or high school, I would have chosen the name Kyle. <laughs> Full offense to all Kyles. That sucks. I also made, you guys know there's lyric videos on YouTube? Yeah, I made those, Larry. I'm the only reason anyone knows the lyrics to Sum 41's Hell Song. I used to make videos where I would take journalist photos of the Iraq war and the war in Afghanistan and put pop punk lyrics over them. <laughs> I was an activist. I did good work. I served our country, Larry, just like you. Me and you, bud. Hell yeah. All right, I wanna talk about the prostate. I've been thinking about it. It's very underutilized. And also, I would buy one. Like, if I could have one installed, I would. 
Like, some people pay $20,000 to have a penis installed. I would pay $20,000 to have a prostate installed. Call it the back clip. Yeah. You like that, Charlie Day? Do you utilize your prostate? Ah, Charlie's gay. Got him. No, he's just cool. He's just cool. Let's go. No, you don't have sex. You're wearing a Star Wars t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he said, yeah. He said, yeah, I know, I know. Oh my goodness. Uh, speaking of gay people, any gay people here? I already know the answer, but give me some feedback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that checks out. Good for them. They should be at home. Nah, I, uh, I, I spent a lot of time like trying not to be gay, trying to be straight. I tried really hard, y'all. And I like, I keep having these memories come back of like times I tried to be straight. I tried so hard to be straight one time in high school that to impress this boy that I told myself I liked, I got into Coldplay. <laughs> and I, you don't know Coldplay? It's white people music. The lead, the lead singer named his son an Apple. It's fucked up, right? I know. No, I literally went on iTunes in 2012 and I purchased for $9.99 their album Milo Zylogo and pretended to like it. All so that this boy with a big nose named Emerson could take another girl to prom. And guess what her last name was? Gay. So fuck you, Megan Gay. <laughs> Yeah, her name was Megan Gay, and then she went and slept with someone else that night. And I took a picture of James Franco to prom. So, that's a self-report. All right, this has been fun. Let's get Tyler back up here. My name is Kate Wonders. Thank you so much. Keep it going for Kate Wonders, everybody. And keep it going for Coldplay. Dun, dun. Fuck Coldplay! Fuck them! I'll kill them! Guys! Your next comic was the bassist in Coldplay, and I have to look at what his name was. Uh, your next comic wrote all those bass lines to those hits that you love. Y'all remember the bass lines to Coldplay songs? No, the bass lines. He wrote them. Your next comic, put your low end hands together for Patrick Grady. Does Coldplay even have a bassist? I don't know. <clears throat> people gotta stop using speakerphone when they're talking to other people. You never know what you're gonna overhear. I walked in the other day, my wife's talking to her friend. Her friend's going on, how come every time I meet the perfect guy, he's got a small dick? <laughs> and I start giggling and my wife turns around and she goes, I know, right? And I was like, <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> And she goes, no, no, honey, I wasn't talking about you. And I was like, oh, thank God. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, people calling themselves parents when all I have is a dog is really weird to me. It's not even the same thing. I put my six-month-old outside to use the bathroom and waited there watching him do it. My neighbor called CPS. I would have been all right, but when they came by, I was crate training. <laughs> It's also messed up when you're at the park and you see another dad pushing the stroller and you're like, yeah, what's up? And then you walk by and it's a rat terrier. You're like, what kind of stolen valor shit is that? It's like seeing a guy with an army jacket and all his medals are on backwards. Another thing that's hard having kids that were raised on the YouTube generation is the way they talk. Like my daughter, I was talking to her the other day about something and she got mad. She goes, I'm going to mute you now, chat. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm going to demonetize your channel, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> but getting older is hard. One of the worst things about getting older that nobody prepared me for 
was as a man you stop getting randomly aroused like 18 times a day. And now it's at the point where like if I don't have purposeful relations with my wife in like two or three days, I start wondering if the shit even works anymore. And I'm just like, oh no, is this gonna work next time? And I had to give up watching porn, not for any moral reason, but I figured there's only so many rounds left in the chamber. And I really just don't want to waste like what happens to be the last one on page 95 of a Pornhub search. Like, ah! Oh. <laughs> Another thing about getting older that's hard is like everything starts changing. You know, like you finally get used to shit in your late 30s and you're like, all right, these are the clothes I like, hairstyle I like. Then your fucking hair falls out and you get fat and you got to give all that shit up. Now the most exciting thing about my love life is what muscle I'm going to pull in bed. You know, and it's fucked up. You're talking about fat kids, kids who grew up fat. And when I was a kid, growing up fat in an Irish Catholic family, it was weird. It was like being an unwed mother in the 1800s. Everybody always let your parents know they failed you. You know, my relatives would come over and they'd be like, Oh, look at Patrick. Isn't he growing? And I'd be like, hey, I saw that. They'd be like, no, nah, no, nah, it's okay. My mom would be like, it's time for school clothes, son. We're going to take you to the store. Put this blanket over your head so nobody sees you. And they'd be like, ah, what the fuck? And then we'd get to the store, and they'd be like, we'd walk in, and my mom would whisper to the guy, like I had some disease. She'd be like, he needs husky sizes. And the guy would be like, all right, ma'am, I got you. And they'd take you to this corner in the back where it's all dark, and there's no belt loops on anything. <laughs> Anybody work in customer service? Yeah, somewhat. I used to work in customer service and it was really bad. Because I just don't like dealing with people. So when people would be like, sir, can you give me a hand? I'd be like, fuck, I'm busy. Can't you see, like, doing something here? That's why I got so many complaints when I was a paramedic. One of, the, one of the other problems with me being a paramedic is I was a lazy paramedic. So what would happen is, like, I would go into somebody's house, but I wouldn't want to do anything. <laughs> and I'd be like, come on, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I get it. Your chest hurts. Everybody's chest hurts. Come on, can you walk to the ambulance? Because I really don't want to carry you down the steps. And I would just eventually just go out and sit in the passenger seat and wait for me to get in the back. <laughs> and if they didn't make it, it was cool. You could just call the coroner. That was game over. It was good. And I was thinking today, I was reading how they were going to give... Sam Bankman Freed is facing 150 years in prison. And I was thinking how screwed up it'd be if they actually made you serve the entire prison sentence if you died, and they just like left your corpse rotting in a cell. <laughs> and some new guy gets put in there and he's like, yo, what the fuck? And he's like, nah, it's cool, man, he's dead. You're good. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Just popped in my head earlier. All right, I will bring your host back up here. A man who doesn't know any bass lines to the Doors songs, Tyler Bauer. Give me up for Patrick Grady, everybody! He doesn't know where he's going! Your next comic knows exactly where he's going. He's coming up to this mic to make you laugh. He's going to make you laugh whether you like it or not. And I love this guy. This guy was always very nice to me when I started out comedy. He was. He was. That's a genuine thing. I know I've said a lot of fucked up, crazy things. But genuinely, your next comic's a great guy. He's a great friend to have. Please put your hands together for Moo Cousin! run the light ever and I know that for a fact because I know this guy personally I do his taxes they're not looking good guys please he's wearing a cool shirt guys your next comic he's wearing a very cool shirt take your fucking jacket off put the fucking shirt on yeah oh my god <laughs> he wasn't even ready for it guys your next comic is very cool He's wearing cool glasses. He's wearing a cool shirt. Also, Home Sweet Home does not represent the views of your next comic, whatever he says. Please put your hands together for Brian, cool shirt guy, Fontaine.
this. Who's <laughs> back there? You're laughing at the shirt, aren't you? Yeah. You're laughing at the shirt? But you don't know, Moo. Oh, actually, I'll ask you. How much do you think I paid on this shirt? Too <laughs> much. <laughs> <laughs> this shit was thirteen dollars. <laughs> My man, I got this at Ross. <laughs> you gotta start. Uh, you gotta start shopping better for your wardrobe. It looks like I spent a thousand dollars on this fucking shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like some hunch. Moo. Let me see your shoes. What are those? The shoes. I don't know what they're called. My man, I'm rocking vans. You know about vans? You don't know about Vans, Moo Cuzzo. This guy's 10 years older than me and doesn't know about Vans. That's crazy. Hell yeah. Guys, let's tell some jokes. Moo knows. Moo. He's a. Wendy Williams got Alzheimer's. That's hilarious to me, because I'm picturing a fucking crazy lady walking around being like, how you doing? What are you doing? I don't remember. Talk to uh, the. Who, who? Are you guys all fucking comics? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be difficult. LT. You see, LT. You see, LT. LT, you see this shirt? Shiny shirt. <laughs> My G, I got it at Ross. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta up your game, pal. I'll up my game with you. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. You're in the full sweatsuit. Yeah. You got sweatpants on. Sweatpants on. Sweatshirt on. Yeah, my shoes are new balance. And your shoes a new balance. Yeah. Now look at me. Looking like a Rastafara. <laughs> I'm looking like money, baby. Looking like motherfucking money. Does anybody have any cocaine? I was being serious, but okay. What can I do? What can I do? Hey guys, you want to hear a joke real quick? Yes. <laughs> What's the hardest part about being a pedophile? What? <laughs> they made you wear that shirt. <laughs> I'm
be certain something? <laughs> Stop something. What? Stop something. That's what he does to convince you he's not a pedophile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to look, to get out of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. No, uh, the hardest part about being a pedophile is fitting in. Uh, fitting in. That's my time. Thank you. I have been a cool shirt guy. Keep it going for Brian Fontaine, the fucker! Spill all my fries and my syrup. Oh my god. He does look cool though. Guys, your next comic does not have a cool shirt. But I'm sure he'll step over these spilled fries on the floor with great uh, integrity. Give it up for Sammy Damimi! Give it up for a uh, cool shirt man, everybody. Gosh, I wish I was as cool. I mean, I can't top that level of comedy. All I can ask is, is the Carmax shirt guy, is, are you a comic too? Why are you here? Oh yeah. You, uh, you got a wife at home? Somebody ask about you, somebody cares about you at home? Maybe. Maybe, yeah, she's probably dead by now. <laughs> Did you leave her in a dungeon? <laughs> oh shit, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this guy is divorced. How we doing, everybody? Glad to be here, glad to be here. Hello, light skin brother, how are you? Thanks for being here. Some, add some color to the PBR. I always have PBR socks. That's how people, that's how I fit in Richmond as a non-white. I, um, this is a while ago, but did, it, did, you, did anybody here have a good Valentine's Day? You don't sell, is that against the faith or something? <laughs> <laughs> he's gay. I, uh, <laughs> no, he's just autistic, guys, it's fine. I, um, he always laughs at that. Um, I uh, kissed a girl uh, in Valentine's Day. I kissed a girl that smokes cigarettes. And my first thought was, Uncle, is that you? <laughs> That's good. I, uh, the fun part about comedy is sometimes you can make someone's day, like the Carmack shirt guy's now thinking about his ex-wife that's dead, he's happy. Look at him smiling. <laughs> the fun part about comedy is you can make a beautiful man's day. Uh, one time there was this uh, seven-year-old lady that came up to me after a good show one time. I promise I had a good show, Mr. Genocide. I uh, had a good show one time. And this lady came up to me and she said, Thank you, this was really fun. I needed that. And she hugs me and gives me a kiss. And it was really sweet. Until I feel her hand right between my legs. Now, people say that I was molested. But I love that shit. It's fine, you can laugh, she's dead now. That happens every time I perform at a cancer hospital. I fucked up the joke, it's supposed to be cancer hospital, then she's dead. Is that a good joke? I'm trying to use it on the show. Is that a good joke? I can tell by the laughs. I, uh, do we have any veterans in the house, any US veterans? No? No one's gonna admit to any? Okay, cool. Uh, I have a, my best friend is a veteran, uh, he's a, my best friend is named John, you know. John was uh, deployed to Iraq, and I'm from Iraq, I'm an Iraqi comedian, and if you think about it, there's not a lot of Iraqi comedians because uh, John shot them all. It's cool. It's fine, I shot all of his best friends. You're the only one with me, thank you. Dude, that's... Yeah, you look like Eggman from Sonic, but if he was younger. No, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> this roasting the only person that's laughing at my jokes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, um, I'm a big cat person, you guys like cats? Yeah, you're a big cat person. I was, at the, I was at the animal shelter, you know? 
and I see this beautiful cat named Sammy. And my name is Sammy, so I thought that was really cute. I really wanted to get this cat. And then somebody else comes in and takes Sammy. And I was really devastated. So I walked to the parking lot and punched that kid. Both John and I punched that kid. We both beat up that child. And that's how I got Sammy. Uh, after that, I smoked a cigarette. <laughs> I don't even like cigarettes. They're just really fun after a violent act. <laughs> this is going really great. Uh, yeah. Here's the, let, let, let's change up the topic. Uh, people say that Arabs hate Jews. That's not true. Because I had performed at a Jewish uh, community center, uh, unpaid, of course, and uh, my buddy and I, uh, my buddy's Catholic, we both did improv for him. So it's an Italian Catholic and an Arab Muslim go to a Jewish community center and we do improv for him. And uh, during the improv, uh, we play two mechanics and I call him Habibi. You guys know what that word means, right? Yeah, Habibi. Habibi, yeah. <laughs> my cousin's here. Yeah. A CarMax guy, you don't know Habibi? You, you're not dealing with Arabs selling you cars all the time, clean title, all that shit? I'm sorry? Dude, but you, you sell cars for a living, brother. Not very well. Oh, shit, dude. So, uh, during the set, I call him Habibi. He's my brother and my friend. Uh, after the show, this old lady walks up to us and says, What are you calling him? Hey, baby? Are you guys gay? I said, no, we're just Palestinian. So she's like, oh my God, thank God, welcome to the synagogue. With that being said, let's welcome Tyler Bauer back to the synagogue, ladies and gentlemen. This was great. Give it up for your good friend, Tyler. This is a great night, man. Thank you for inviting me to headline this great show. Keep it going, Sammy, to meet everybody. All right. I still got real cheese in my mouth. Guys! We are down to your last two comics of the night. Last two comics of the night, everybody. It's been a great show. Thank you for sticking around, even though it's the people that still need to go up. Guys, you've been great. Your next comic has two letters that describe him. Two letters, only two letters, guys. Your next comic can be described as LT, that's his name. Put your hands together for LT! Yo, hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? Um, my name is LT. Uh, I guess I'm at the part of the show where it's okay to bomb. You know what I'm saying? Um, Carmax guy, I'm not gonna make fun of you. All the jokes have been said. There's nothing. I hate took all the good jokes. I just wanna ask you, like, shit, hook me up with a job, or like, I got good credit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I may not look like it. I'm a black man with good credit. That's not like, is it okay? Will you believe me if I told you I do have good credit? Okay, cause I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little, I'm a smidge racist to white people. Not like, whoa, cancel LT racist towards white people, but like, so, like, I'm an IT technician, so like, I always have to go to like, to my co-worker's computer and try to fix it. Well, it just so happened that I had a co-worker named Jess. Jess is a white lady. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, until she took out some cocoa butter and she started rubbing her hands with it, and I was like, oh! <gasps> And she's like, what's wrong, LT? I'm like, you're wearing cocoa butter. Because, you know, mostly black women wear cocoa butter. So to, for me to see a white woman doing it was just surprising to me. Because, like I said, it's like a black guy having good credit. It's just, it's just something you don't see every day. You know, don't miss. I, I understand the joke makes you uncomfortable. You can have cocoa butter. I just wasn't ready for it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you had it too? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> But it's like, I'm a little, I'm a little, also, I'm a little misogynistic too. Not like, whoa, cancel him, misogynistic, but just like, okay, we can work with this misogynistic. Like, I just want to look in your purse and see if there's some hot sauce in there now. Just, you know, it's not, don't make me misogynistic, right? It's a little zippy. Okay, just making sure. But it's not cancel zippy, right? Alright, cool, just checking. Alright. No, because see, the thing is, it's like, um, 
I'm actually trying to take a new approach to comedy because I had I had like a real top tier comic say like I don't need to be real vulgar when I do comedy and I said fuck there goes 90% of my jokes now because um I can't read a room worth shit and people say it's cause well it's okay until you're autistic no that's not because I'm autistic it's just when people say I say like hey guys how you doing they're like we're fine like you guys are fucking lying to me and I can I can tell by the tone like I perceive things different from what my therapist tells me like. Even though you guys say you're doing fine, I know you're fucking lying. Like, I just really pray for one day that somebody's like, I'm mad and he's ready to put a gun to his mouth, man. I'm like, and everybody starts screaming like, ah! I'm like, ah, at least this person's honest. <laughs> Somebody give that guy a hug. <laughs> you know, that you stop a lot of school shoes if you hug him. That's why I never shot to school. Because there was always there somebody to hug me. I don't care if that's a bad joke. I'm speaking my feelings right now. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I mean, like, yeah, I got I got picked on a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's like black, don't look black. Um, I, I have a really, like, squeaky voice, too, and I'm 6'2", so, like, you know what I'm saying? I have a lot of, also, my legs go in just like your legs, too, so people used to call me girl pants, which was very... <laughs> This was this was way before the, the non-bullying campaign became a thing. Actually, tell you the truth, the teachers never really cared about me because like I was a more docile student, so they could they used to bitch me and not bitch Shamik or Terry, but they would really get in my bushes though. Like like I told you, I'm black, but I don't look like it, so I was never allowed to say the word nigga, but the other students was allowed to say the word nigga. So instead of giving them a lecture on the history of the N-word, they had to give it to me. Like, I wasn't going to school with these motherfuckers at all. First of all, girl pants or skirts? Girl pants. Girl pants, I know. And I don't you're looking directly at me. Oh, I'm sorry. I just thought since it was like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, there's not that many people in here. I just thought since it was, it was just good feedback. Because, you know, you also helped me with the misogyny thing, too, as well. So. It does? Oh, I guess I owe you a drink. Is that what I'm supposed to do next? I have to get a drink, right? Sammy, help me out with this. You know I'm autistic. I don't know what comes next. Are you sure? Because you had girl troubles just the other day. Are you sure? Because I will fucking bail in a heartbeat if shit don't go well. Uh, that no? Yeah. I think like the one thing I don't like about comedy is like, uh, if I say a joke the wrong way, people try to fight me. And the one thing is a lot of people don't know about me, I've been in a lot of fights coming up. Like, no, like, I'm actually, like, if anybody's curious, I do train people in boxing for $25 a month. Um, but there's a the type of people who I do hate fighting, that's skinny people. And Knuckles is just so fucking spiky. Like, Wolverine had a, had a bootleg baby. <laughs> It just hurts. Well, y'all, that's my time. You can follow me at One Bad Joke LT. If you got any feedback, that'll be great. Thanks a lot. Keep it going for LT. Let me buy you a drink. I'm LT. You know me. Guys, your next comic is the last comic of the night, guys. Thanks for sticking it out, hanging out, having a good time. Your last comic of the night. Sorry, one more time, your name. Whatever you want to call me. Is the name of your next comic. Give it up for her, everybody! Hello. Really embarrassing. Six people here right now. That's all I have to say about that. Um, the jokes that I had planned were just roasts on everybody who's gone earlier tonight, but nobody has stuck around, so that's awkward. However, everyone made a lot of Jew jokes tonight. And I think that we think in Richmond that's safe territory. There was one Jew in the audience tonight, and it was me. Tyler, I'm sorry that you were circumcised. Thank you. Will Minor, I'm glad that you love the Jews. Oh. 
That was disrespectful, Tyler. Don't try to get just because I don't get close to the mic. Um, I had one more joke about that, but I don't know what it was. Great, so anyway, I'm taking this class that Cade Wonders is teaching. We love Cade. And I have to try out some more PC jokes instead of my normal Holocaust joke set. Um, because my parents want to see the live stream of this showcase, which is horrifying. My mother is Wanda, she is a boomer, and she has joined a group for old people who are involved in the performing arts called the Broadway Boomers. She walks around and she tells everybody about how she is involved with the Boomers, she's in with the Boomers, she loves the Boomers, she brags about being a part of them. When she says that, she sounds like she hates gay people. And it's awkward because she has a bisexual daughter. It's me. My sister's very straight. Um, does anyone else have really old parents? How old? 60 what? Did you say your grandparents are... They're basically my parents. Your grandparents are in their 60s? Yeah. So my dad is 79. And my father speaks to President Eisenhower because when President Eisenhower was in administration, the ideal temperature for the American household, 68 degrees. 68 fucking degrees. My parents don't know what a 69 is, but it was outlawed in our household, as far as my thermostat goes. 69 degrees is a no. Me and my sister, as children, would go, we would go to the thermostat, we would turn it up one degree because it was frigid. My dad, 25 minutes later, would hear the HVAC kick on, he would walk out and he would go, Girls, who the fuck turned up the thermostat? Do you pay the bills in the house? Do you buy your own jackets? It's way too fucking hot in this house. You turn the fuck down. Now he's old and he's decrepit. That house is a sauna. This is going very poorly. I've been drinking a lot. All my friends left. There are six people here to watch me bomb. Um, I don't know what else I have. Now I have a voice recording and I don't know how to stop it because I'm as old as my parents. I don't know how to look at my notes. I'm having a bad time. I have my first visitor here tonight. Her name is Izzy. She's only ever seen me in a trauma-informed setting and she watched all of you make racist jokes tonight. And she's only ever seen me be like, you're valid, you're okay, everything was fine. And here I am. I don't know. Existing. <laughs> I resonated a lot with Big Scotty tonight when he was talking about white women sucking dick because, <laughs> listen, it's a resume item for me. I can apply for jobs, but if I had to pay taxes on them, I would make a lot less money. Um, cool. I don't know. All I'm thinking about is the fact that last time um, what's his name? Who normally hosts this mic? Ooh, this is embarrassing. Jacob. Jacob made the blowjob face at me. No. Because I didn't have the mic close enough to me. And it was really awkward. I'm really glad I'm closing this out for you, Tyler. I'm so glad that you're guest hosting and that it ended like this. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad this is going to be on YouTube. <laughs> Keep clapping for everybody! Thank you so much for sticking it out tonight at Home Sweet Home Comedy, everybody. Y'all been a lovely audience. We've had a great time. I will be hosting this again in two weeks. Jacob McFadden's having a kid. Shouts out to him. Good guy. Great guy. Great father, I've heard. Guys, 
Thank you so much. Please tip Bridget very well. She's a great bartender and a saint and a patron. Please tip her very well when you close out. I've been Tyler Bauer, your guest host. I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you so much. Goodbye.